check out Chris's phone. This is crazy. Here's his phone and I am 100% sure what his passcode is. I know that it's 911247 and check out what happens when I enter the correct code. It bonks the correct passcode. What's up with this? I think I might have an idea what's going on. So let me walk you through. This is a big problem and it might explain why some people are saying, hey, my phone is saying my passcode is wrong when I know it's correct. So let me take a step back and show you how I got here with Chris's phone. Let's talk about an iPhone 11 logic board. An iPhone 11 logic board actually has two layers. The top layer, which is where all the data is. The top layer has the CPU, the NAND, the connectors, the charge IC, everything that it takes to make the phone look and feel like a phone, except for the bottom layer has RF function. What does that mean? Anything that has to do with making and receiving a wireless signal, that is a bottom board function, including the NFC, Apple Pay, or Near Field Communications IC, that's on the bottom RF board. So Chris's phone came in and it had a short circuit. And the first thing that I do is I separate the layers, the top and the bottom board, to see if the problem is on the top board and I have to fix it, or if it's on the bottom board and maybe I can get the data anyway. So here's what that looks like. I grab a hot plate and turn on the heat. All right, that looks like we're gonna be able to separate the layers. Aha. Woo. There we go. So the top board is now right here and the bottom board is separated. So for Chris's board, it turns out that what was actually wrong was on the bottom board. The short circuit was on the bottom board, which meant the top board is perfectly fine. And we might try to say, well, if the problem was on the bottom board, maybe we can just plug in a screen, charge port, battery. Maybe we can just get the data straight from the top board by itself. Let me show you what that looks like if you try. So with a screen, a battery, and a charge port plugged in, I can boot it up. Now watch what happens when I enter the correct passcode, 911247. So we get this phenomenon. This is what I call the NFC divorce process. When the top board alone doesn't detect its matching NFC, the Apple Pay chip, the near field communications chip, when it doesn't detect its native NFC, there's no NFC, it will hang on the last digit of passcode and it will take you to swipe up to recover. Now, this would actually work. I could recover it if I can find a way to get this top board to stay on for long enough. So let me enter in the passcode. This is the correct passcode. I have to enter it in twice and then it's gonna lead me to this attempting data recovery screen. And unfortunately, the phone is gonna have to stay on for longer than three minutes in order to complete this process. But an iPhone is not going to be able to do that, that stay on for longer than three minutes, unless it can get a thumbs up from all of the required sensors. And one of those sensors are, you guessed it, on the bottom board. The iPhone 11 has this tiny little microphone, which is part of the power button and the power button plugs into the bottom board. So without a bottom board, there's no way that I can complete the NFC divorce process. Now, on another model, I would be able to do that, in which case I could just extract the data from the top board by itself. But not on the iPhone 11, I'm gonna have to put it on a bottom board. So here's what I did for Chris's phone. Since Chris's phone's problem is the bottom board, what if I just use somebody else's bottom board? We do this all the time. In fact, this one that I'm holding is from our parts bucket and it says, do not steal power button because if you rob that connector, you won't be able to use it to stay on for three minutes. So I've recovered data from lots of phones using this bottom board. So how can I combine these things? That's where the eye socket comes in. Here comes the eye socket, and I'm gonna take my known good bottom board. 
I'm gonna take the little interposer pogo pin board and I'm gonna take Chris's top board. Chris's top board. So this is creating a hybrid. Now I would expect because Chris's top board is not gonna detect Chris's NFC, what's gonna happen? Like always, we're gonna see that hang on last digit of passcode, swipe up to recover. So let's watch that happen. Now this time I'm gonna plug my power button into that bottom board. Last step, plug in the battery. And now we're gonna boot up Chris's top board onto my known good bottom board. And we're gonna expect to see it hang on last digit of passcode and then swipe up to recover. And then since we have a power button, it's gonna be able to stay on for longer than three minutes and complete that NFC divorce process. After that step, then the top board will boot up on any bottom board once it stops looking for Chris's native NFC. Except that's not what happened. And here we are at the beginning. 91124, hang on last digit. <laughs> it didn't do that. In fact, this is really crazy. I only entered the passcode wrong one time. This is the second time and it's already gone to iPhone unavailable for one minute. That is not correct. It's supposed to give me multiple chances to enter my passcode, which is the correct passcode before it gets to this state. This was really mind boggling and I made this video because this is not the first time that I've seen this. So many of you that are doing data recovery, you may be used to using this strategy of taking a known good bottom board and swapping it in to be able to recover the data for somebody. This was such a troll for me that I actually told Chris, hey, you have the wrong passcode because I didn't expect it to act like this and it fooled me for a little bit. So what should we do? We still need to get Chris's data out of it. And the next thing that I decided to do with Chris's case is to just go ahead and try to fix his native bottom board and then see if this was really the wrong passcode or if something else was going on. So here's Chris's actual natural bottom board. So this is the one that goes with Chris's top board. This means Chris's native NFC is gonna be on this board. Let's go back and build this whole pancake again and see what happens. And now I'm ready to turn it on. And this is what I had to do the other day. Luckily, I was actually able to fix the bottom board so that I could really ask the question, Chris, do you really know the passcode? Is this wrong passcode? Or is something weird and unexpected happening with this whole NFC recognition circuit? Okay, we waited out that one minute unavailable. Now I'm gonna enter the same passcode, 9112. Four, seven. And it was true. This is Chris's passcode and it unlocks. So what is up with that? I want you to really see how this can be a huge deal for data recovery because for years we've used the strategy of RF board doesn't matter. You don't have to actually fix the RF board because you can swap in any other RF board. The RF chips on here, the Wi-Fi chip, the NFC chip, these are, they don't contain user data. So it's really interesting and weird that this would have anything to do with the passcode unlock. My next question, I'm curious whether or not this bonks correct passcode, is this something that is a Chris's board thing or is this something that follows my known good bottom board. Which one is causing this behavior? So let's do an experiment. And I don't know what the answer to this is gonna be. Let's see what happens if we take somebody else's top board and put it on my known good bottom board and see what does it do. All right, Chris is going over here.
All right, now we're going to boot up Justin's board. So Justin's top board is now on my normal, known good bottom board that I've used for lots of iPhone 11 data recoveries. Let's see what happens when we try to type in Justin's correct passcode. All right, this is a four digit code and the correct code, all right, the correct code is 0429, 0429. Hang on last digit of passcode. This is the typical expected behavior. Swipe up to recover. And since we have a bottom board and since we have the power button connected, this should be able to complete. This is the NFC divorce process. And once this completes, I bet you that Justin's board will boot up and unlock on my known good bottom board, which means that there's something about Chris's top board, something about his NAND, the data, the CPU, the version of iOS, something that is unusual about Chris's board that's making it not unlock as normal with the correct code and not making it behave as normal when it detects an NFC mismatch. Finally, oh my God, that NFC divorce took forever. Here we are back in business on Justin's phone. Now we're gonna try to enter that same passcode 0429 on my known good bottom board and it unlocks, hooray. All right, so here's the thing. Once you go through that NFC divorce process, I think that this board, Justin's board, is gonna be able to boot on any iPhone 11 bottom board. It's no longer looking for his NFC on his bottom board. So let's do another test. Let's find out. Can Justin's board, which is now NFC agnostic, can it boot up over on Chris's bottom board, right? So Chris's bottom board will boot up Chris's top board but is this bottom board have something weird about it? Is there something about the combination of these two? Let's check it out. Let's find out. Can Justin's top board unlock on top of Chris's bottom board? That's interesting. This is really interesting. I didn't expect this. So. Here on Chris's bottom board, we don't see the lock screen. We can kind of see that outline of that dog lock screen. I don't know what's gonna happen. Okay. Interesting, so now we're kind of like seeing some of these signs of the NFC divorce process, which really is kind of processing an update, but we didn't do an update. We never plugged this into iTunes and downloaded an update. We didn't change iOS at all. This is super weird. Okay, interesting. Here we are back at the lock screen and let's lock and unlock to see if it is back to behaving normal. 0429. Okay, so now we've got Justin's board can boot up not just on the known good, it's also booting up on Chris's board even though we had to jump through a couple of hoops. All right, so this is what is typical. This is what we usually expect, that once it goes through the NFC divorce process, then the top board becomes agnostic. It just stops looking for its paired NFC, and it doesn't seem to get married to whatever NFC is on the board that you're putting it on. Now, I'm just curious to see what version of iOS either one of these phones are on. Let's go back and see what happens if, if we put Chris's board, this is the one that with the, the bonks correct code. Let's see what happens if we put Chris's board on something other than this one. Let's see if we put Chris's board here on Justin's bottom board. Does Chris's board always bonk correct code? 
on any bottom board, or does it just not like my known good? Back to Chris's, this is back to Chris's top board. However, Chris's top board is now on Justin's bottom board. Let's give it a try. Nine, one, one, two, four, seven. And look, it doesn't like it. So there's something about Chris's top board that really separated from its native NFC, but it will boot on its native NFC. All right, here's why I think this is important not just for these sort of weird edge cases where if you're not recovering data and separating tops and bottoms, you know, how does this apply to you? And here's the thing. I've noticed out in the wild that people will tell me, I know what my passcode is and the phone is rejecting the passcode. I think that there must be some sort of a natural way that you can get into the situation of Chris's board where it may, your, your board may not be separated. You know, your board is inside your phone and it's just like it's always been. But what if some accident, water damage, little piece of corrosion, just some sort of mistake happens inside the layers of your logic board so that your top board cannot detect your NFC? even though you didn't separate it. Is that possible? Does that happen? And if so, maybe your board might behave like Chris's, where it will just say the correct code is wrong. If that happens to you, here's what I recommend. I think that you can force the NFC divorce process by asking the phone to update software. We can put a phone in that swipe up to recover by updating software. So if we put this phone in recovery mode, let's give it a try. Let's put this phone in recovery mode, connect it to a computer, update iOS, and see if it can now boot up on some foreign, somebody else's bottom board. Can it stop caring about its native NFC? So even on the bad behaving Chris board, let's see what happens. I'm going to trigger it to boot in recovery mode just by pressing my thumb on the power button while I connect to USB. So that's the signal to get to recovery from the completely off state. Your finger pressing the power button, plug in USB, and it will go to recovery mode. Man, this takes, this takes forever. I've been here for like two hours. Finally, finally, finally done. Okay, this is Chris's phone. Chris's phone now updated and it is still on somebody else's board. It's on Justin's bottom board. Will it let me in? Huzzah! Wee! All right, last check. I wanna go back to the original scenario. I wanna go back and I wanna take Chris's board and I want to put it right back on that same board that it could not unlock. The one that bonked correct code. Will it work now that we've updated? All right, it's the moment of truth. We are all the way back at the beginning. This is the same combination that I started the video that you all saw just a few minutes ago. Bonks correct passcode. But now, let's see. It unlocks. All right, there we go. So we, what have we learned here? I think this is really important to apply. What does this mean for you guys? If you are doing data recovery, you're going to be in the situation, as you know, where you're taking top boards and either recovering data alone or combining them with known good bottom boards. You can still do that, but you have to make sure that the board behaves like you would expect. That's what I missed originally. I just saw it bonk the correct code and I was like, oh, wrong passcode without thinking, oh, it's supposed to hang on the last digit when there's an NFC mismatch. Number two, you can force the NFC divorce by software update. 
But remember, that's kind of a risk because that board is going to have to be able to stay on for longer than three minutes to complete that update process and get the divorce. I started making this video about two hours, two and a half hours ago. And the majority of that time was me sitting here waiting for these things to, to finish updating. So if your board can't stay on for three minutes, then you're better off fixing your bottom board so that it will boot up and open without having to wait out a big update. There's lots of phones that are out there. Um, whether you're doing data recovery and seeing phones like this one, right? This one got run over by an excavator. Really sad case, we, we recovered the data. But look at the board, specifically, look at the bottom board. When we separated the top layer, look at the bottom board. There's no fixing this bottom board. Right, so in a case like this, if you end up having to recover the data from the top board only, and you're gonna put it together with a working bottom board, we ended up taking the chips, just the chips off of the top board and moving it to a new scenario. You have to watch out for and know that sometimes what will appear to you to be bonk's correct code, or it, it'll just look like wrong passcode to you, may actually be bonking correct code because of NFC mismatch. And what if you're not a data recovery person at all? You're just a person with a phone. How does this apply to you? It's because the, when these phones get like a hard drop, maybe it's not this severe, but you can actually have under the microscope little tiny tears in that separate the top board from the bottom board. So they're not actually making connection even though they look fine it's still in your in your housing so what does that mean for you it's possible that some of the complaints that are out there of i know this is the passcode and my phone is saying it's not and it's bonking the correct code if you just keep entering the passcode keep entering the passcode you will disable the phone once a phone becomes iphone unavailable then even we can't help you with forensic data recovery once you hit that point. So it's really important to stop and know that you should update to try to force a divorce between your top board and the NFC just to rule that out. So let me say that again. If this is happening to you, your phone is rejecting the correct passcode, do not keep guessing. Do not let it become iPhone available or you won't be able to back up that data if it's not already in iCloud. So what should you do? Force it to update. That way you can rule out maybe there's some kind of a hidden disconnect, some little speck of water damage somewhere that is making your logic board recognize that there's an NFC down there, but know that it's not your NFC. So this is a bit of an edge case. Typically that will just show up as hang on last digit of passcode, swipe up to recover and you'll be fine. But know that this edge case is out there. And if you've come to this video because your phone is bonking what you know is the correct code, then go ahead and try to do update and you, you might cure some kind of a weird, we don't really understand it, disconnect between the NFC chip and your CPU. All right, hopefully this is something that you find useful. And if you have any weird cases that you wanna tell us about, I'll be reading the comments.